Payback is a bitch. Welcome back, guys, to the SmackDown GM mode here on WWE 2K22. We're three weeks away from Payback, and Payback seems like it's going to be WrestleMania Backlash Backlash. So, yeah, we've got WrestleMania Backlash. Now we have WrestleMania Backlash Backlash because there's a lot of backlash from WrestleMania Backlash. There's a lot of feuds that I do not think are going to finish just now, I think they're going to carry on, we've got Drew McIntyre, Otis, we've got Charlotte, Sasha Banks, even though these two didn't have a match at Payback, they're going to have a match right here on the show tonight, and the main event, Kane just came out of the note, Woodworks really, Kane just appeared last week, made a Smackdown debut, he got called up by Roman Reigns, Reigns says he is the big dog, he is the head of the table, he's the tribal chief, Kane is a, you know, a washed up has-been, and it looks like it could be Seth Rollins versus Kane at Payback. But Samoa Joe, who came agonizingly close to defeating Roman Reigns, he wants a rematch against Roman Reigns. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Probably would have done some sort of triple threat. But because GM mode sucks, it doesn't let you do triple threats. So we're stuck with either one-on-ones or tag team matches, unfortunately, guys. But for now... Well, uh, we'll have a look at what we need to figure out. So there's nothing in the journal, really, that we need to look at. We know that we're tanking in the ratings. We need to start delivering. At the moment, Raw's kicking our ass. Hopefully, we can improve. Power cards, do we want to use any of them? I'm not too sure. A GM interference book this week will provide an additional plus two show bonus and be free to book this week. Well, I don't think... We'll... I'm going to start using these, but I'm just not going to use them right now, guys, because I want to get to the show. We could sign Legends. We could sign Free Agents. I was looking at our roster. We need to sign another heel. We need a heel person, just uh, like a mid-card heel guy, because at the moment, we've only got four male heels. Gable, Otis, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. So, uh, yeah, we're not really heel heavy. And we probably need to add at least another one to the roster. I was looking at free agency. There is Shelton Benjamin. But I'm not going to get Shelton Benjamin. I just, I don't know, I'm not, massive, I'm not a massive fan, if I'm being completely honest. Plus, there's no room on him. There's no room for the, him on the show this week. So it doesn't really make much sense to sign him now. But I will keep an, I'll keep updated on this. I'll keep an eye on this. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll sign somebody in the, in the hopefully next couple of weeks. What I've noticed is... There's not like a wide variation of popularity. I mean, it doesn't seem right to me that Shelton Benjamin is only four popularity less than Edge. And this guy here, Jordan Devlin, who nobody knows. I don't even, I, I'm legit not making fun of the guy. I don't have a clue who he is. But he's 53 popularity and he's only seven less than Edge. That kind of, that just seems like madness to me. But here, we don't make the rules. I think we used to have Shotzi Blackheart on our roster, am I right? And now she's a free agent, so interesting. Will we be signing her back? No, definitely not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's go then. Let's book the show. The show's done, so we're going to get straight into it. First, we need to check the show logistics. So I almost started there with a shit show. Let's go. We want the uh, we want the Thunderdome. We want the Gorilla Crew. We want the basic lights and effects pyro. We can't purchase the next one until week nine. And we want Cameo Appearances Campaign. Yeah, give us all the good stuff. Hopefully we can get a good rating. 80,000 shows, shows going to cost. 80,000 grand. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's go. And hopefully we can put on a good show here tonight on Friday Night Smackdown. Opener then with a run-in for Otis. Will that run-in lead to a Otis? No, so... <laughs> okay. Otis run-in. He tried to um, cost McIntyre the match, but McIntyre wasn't having it and, and won anyway. And now we've got Otis McIntyre up to level three. The rivalry grows, and the match was good. Three stars. It's a solid opener to the show. So fingers crossed we can keep this going through it. Up next, got a promo. Sasha Banks just, like I said, refusing to go away. Essentially wants another shot at the Women's Championship, and it was okay. Not the greatest promo in the world, but it was okay. And the rivalry now grows to level 4. So, I'll take that. Up next with Candice LeRae versus Nia Jax. I'm actually going to play this match because I don't think we've played as Candice LeRae yet. Whereas, I have used Ray, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. And that's the only thing I would say about this game. With such a, you know, small match card. With such a short roster. You are continuously 
going to be using the same people and I think it is you're kind of going to get sick of seeing the same people in my opinion from uh, from time to time but that, that's the only that's the one we no downside that I have of it but anyway let's get into the game we'll play as Candice LeRae and we'll see if we can get a win over the 560 pound McDonald's machine Nia Jax so let's see if we can win here. I'm sure Nia Jax isn't 560 pounds. She's probably a bit more like 480, but here. Let's not talk about a woman's weight. Apparently it's apparently it's rude. And we don't want to be we don't want to be considered rude guys. We're not an asshole. We're good guys. Anyway, here she comes. Poison. Candice Lady making her way to the ring. Taking her time. Hurry up. The ring is this way. Get it this way, the way? Nah, bad joke. It was, it was pretty pish. Not gonna lie, guys. It was pretty poor. So, fun fact, actually, Candice, uh, Candice LeRae was told by WWE in the past that she wasn't pretty enough to be signed by the company, which I find a bit weird. I mean, I mean, we've seen a lot worse in WWE. Take note of, like, Shayna Baszler, Nicole Bass, um, you know, people like this. So I, I did find that strange, like, I mean, is Candice LeRae the, the worst looking? No, not not by a country mile. I wouldn't, she's, she, I wouldn't say she's in the top worst looking 10 at the moment, so I don't know how she wasn't deemed, you know, good enough. Stay to keep her, she might not be, but like I said, just, I mean, I mean, what would you, what would you rather look at, Candice LeRae or Dewdrop? Come on, it's, it's not rocket science. But yeah, no, I thought it was a fun fact, but anyway, let's put that behind us. We've signed her to a deal, permanent deal, so she's going nowhere. And here comes the opponent. The only place she's going is catering to eat other food. I'm not like most girls, I eat 500 pounds worth of food. Down, down, down. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, Nia Jax. Probably, if she was standing in front of me, I, I definitely wouldn't say this shit in real life to her, you know? Especially her being that big. I think I would brick it, guys. I think I would have to uh, tap out, but she's not in front of me. Well, she's in front of me on the screen, that's about it, so I get the trash talk, I get the bad mouth for all that I want. Happy days. Good stuff for me. But yeah, then, here we go. Nia Jax versus Candice LeRae is coming up. Big size difference here. I don't want to keep talking about size, but uh, it's pretty big. <laughs> And let's see if Candice LeRae can overcome it. Went for a drop kick straight away. That didn't really happen. Nia Jax no souls and just tosses her around the ring. Nia Jax seems pretty furious here. Nia Jax doesn't look like she's happy. Big clothesline though. Takes Jax down. Kind of expecting Jax to no sell that. But no, nah, actually she didn't. And a big neck breaker from Nia Jax. Taking her opponent down. Candice LeRae counters. Kick to the midsection. Again, Nia Jax just, what's she going for here, lifting her up. Oh man, like an Alabama slammer would have made Hardcore Holly proud of that one. And then Nia Jax working on the leg here. Candice LeRae fighting back, big right hands. Nia Jax ducks underneath. Nia Jax has got her in a kind of headlock position. What's she going for? Scoop slam into the ropes. And Jesus, now she's working on the arm and... Oh my god, broken arm for sure there. Candice LeRae. Oh no, this is bad. This is bad news. Big splash off the top. I think that's the last time Candice LeRae says shit about Nia Jax. She's on the... Oh, and a big leg drop. Nia Jax is fucking destroying Candice LeRae here. Candice LeRae ducks underneath. Kick to the leg. Another kick to the leg. Another kick to the leg. And another insecurity. Doesn't even send her down though. And Candice gets sent up for the uh, sidewalk slam. Oh, Nia Jax went for the leg drop again. She missed, though. Can Candice begin to... Oh, and a big shot there. A big kick to the dome from Candice LeRae. A drop kick doesn't really do much. Another drop kick doesn't really do much. And a clothesline that doesn't do much. And I don't know what that was, but it certainly didn't help either. And now it's... It's Nia Jax, oh, we're a spine buster. And now Jax, gonna maybe try and put Lorraine away here. Jax, what's she doing? Just lifting her up like she weighs absolutely nothing. Lifting her up like she's picking up her takeaway for the night. 
She's got her above our shoulders, above our head, and just drops her. And New Jax is meaning business about to put her opponent away with Candice LeRae. I don't know if she went downstairs, it may have been, it was a little bit close. Nia Jax counters on, hits a, a spine buster, or whatever you want to call that. Fall away, slam again, Candice LeRae kicks out of it. Candice LeRae goes downstairs, drop kick, toe hold. And it's a version of the crossface, Chris Benoit, eat your heart out. But it's not going to work, Nia Jax too big, Nia Jax too strong. A big knee to the back of the head, then a big right hand there. And Candice LeRae, no choice but to let go, and she just gets fucking hell, hair tossed across the ring. Now Jack's working on this leg. Probably wants to just rip it off and chew on it, like a chicken wing from KFC. And now she's going to the top, well I thought she was going to the top rope, she obviously thought better of it. Would not recommend it. Unless you want to turn Candice into a pancake, then probably best off. Not going to the top rope, but again, Leia just lifts her gorilla press above her shoulders. Big elbow drop. Nia Jax now in complete control. Candice LeRae back to her feet and hits a, a forearm clothesline. Now she's going to the top rope. She got anything in the tank here? Big drop kick. Big time drop kick. And a big enziguri. But oh, a shot for Nia Jax. Nijax, I don't know what this is. Oh, a big headbutt to the back. But Candice LeRae again with a counter. And Candice LeRae, what's she going for? Could it be a sharpshooter, perhaps? Some sort of drop toe hold? I don't know what this submission is. But, oh, but Nijax gets its face first. Curb stomped almost. And Candice now beginning to uh, look as if she could put Nia away here. Drop toe hold again. And she locks in that Chris Benoit-like manoeuvre. That Chris Benoit-like crossface. I think Nia Jax again, probably overpower here, probably escape it. And she does. Once more, Nia Jax go out of it. Candice already rolls to her feet. Again, no drop to hold. And I don't think Nia's got a counter for this here. Nia Jax again caught in the middle of the ring, but... It's not really doing much damage to Nia Jax, just could probably sit here all day and not tap it. Big knee, big strike. And now Nia Jax looking to put her opponent away. Candice though, I think she's countered it. She drops down underneath. Holy shit, what a German suplex the ring! It's almost exploded. It was like an earthquake. Candice now going to the top rope. Asking for Naya to get up. Naya's slowly getting up. If Naya turns round, what's Candace got in store for her here? Naya's taking forever and oh we just do a draw. <laughs> there you go, double axe handle smash to the back. That'll work. That will work. Now it's at the top rope. Candace Larray with a massive splash into the cover. Has she got her beating here? Maybe one, two, no, Naya Jacks with a kick out. I don't think Candice can quite believe it there. Jack's there downstairs, downstairs. Candice will really shot to the back of... And she's going, she's going again. She's locked in again. The drop to hold. The drop to hold. And I think Nia Jax this time maybe could be in trouble. She's in the middle of the ring. She's got nowhere to go. And Candice are really about to defeat Nia Jax. Oh no, not quite. Nia Jax not having it. Nia Jax, what the fuck is this? We thought Nia Jax was beat. It looks like Nia Jax is far from beat. Nia Jax again. Grabbing the hair again. Big blows to the head. And Candice LeRae will have to go back to the drawing board here. Candice LeRae drops her down. Could be going for this whole sharpshooter curb stomp thingy manoeuvre again. And this time she lands it. And that could do it. Has to roll over that big massive body. Goes for the cover. Legs hooked and free! And Candice LeRae has defeated Nia Jax. Did you see it coming? Did you see it coming? Personally, I didn't. But it's a big, big, big win for Candice LeRae. She's done it here on Friday Night SmackDown, defeating Nia Jax. Like I said, I don't think many people seen it coming. It's not a win we were expecting to see, it's not the outcome we thought would happen.
but it has happened, and it is a big win for Candice LeRae. Only a mediocre match, though, two stars. It's not exactly great. Thought we would have done a bit better, considering they are in a rivalry, but uh, no, not quite. It is what it is. Up next, we've got Samoa Joe. Then some advertising. Samoa Joe promo effect was down minus four, but we got some money in 14 grand, which I guess is pretty good. And then main event tag team match. We're going to simulate this, and it's a win for... It's a win. It's a, it's a win for those guys, isn't it? The Shield teaming up again. Good match. Three stars. I don't know how exactly this show is going to be compared to Raw's, but we'll figure it now. I mean, again, it seems like Raw just puts on the same fucking matches every single week. I'd say almost to the point where it's like borderline broken. And they have an amazing... Fo All right, piss off. That's not what we wanted. So an amazing match. Uh, promo there by, by the Freak Show. Rhea Ripley, Austin Fury versus Timothy Thatcher up next. An okay two and a half star match. Got Cameron Grimes, John Cena. I mean, why is John? I mean, John Cena must be disgusted having to share a brand with these people. And then main event is Reckoning versus Becky Lynch, and it's Becky Lynch with the win, with the W, in a good match, three star match, level up four now. Again, it looks like Ross just done enough to beat us. Marginally, they were better, really. Apart from the main event, it was the same. But overall, I do think Rose won this one. Well, we put on... Show quality was D, but we put on a match quality B. So our match quality was B. At least we put on a better show. Got 53,000 fan change. But... Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure we're going to do enough to beat Raw. No, we haven't. We haven't beat Raw. They get 51,000 fan change. And it was close, but again, not close enough. And Raw takes the lead this week. I say takes the lead. They've already got the lead, but, you know, they've increased the lead. Um, hey, McMahon, you've seen the work I've been putting in, but I know I can do more for the brand. Okay, Gable, I'm sure you can. I'm ready for a run to run a main event match, and I know the fans will be excited for it. That would mean a lot to me and for my career. What do you say? Hmm... Chad Gable in the main event. Chad Gable in the main event. Could we have the Alpha Academy? I'm sorry. Nah, I'm, I can't, Chad. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I feel like... I, um, you know, I mean... Alright, I get it. Like... I'm really excited for this upcoming pay-per-view. Can't wait to put on a great show for the crowd. Uh, well, hopefully you do, Otis, because I do plan on having Otis on that show. So hopefully Otis can put in a good show. Um, but yeah, there you go. I mean, last week it wasn't a big deal. There was, there was virtually nothing in it in the ratings between Raw and SmackDown. So we'll, we'll try and put on a better show this week. Hopefully we can finally defeat Raw. I think we, we did beat them once. We beat them in week four. Marginally, we beat them, but that's it. Apart from that, they beat us every other week. We need to start winning, guys. Last week, this week, I mean, I'm not going to cry over it. Like I said, there was barely any difference in the fan change, so it's not like we lost. And, and in terms of money, we are ahead at the moment. We've got a slightly, a, a good advantage over Raw, so hopefully we can continue that. Anyway, that's it for this episode of the GM Mode, guys. We're now just two weeks away for payback. Tune in next time to see what happens. If you're all enjoying this series, then again, Please like the video, please subscribe, please comment down below, share this video if you can, and I'll catch you guys next time on the WWE 2K22 Smackdown GM mode, but until then, peace.